Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Landscape Photography Podcast. This podcast is also going to be an audio podcast. So if you go over to landscapephotographypodcast.com or just do a search for it in iTunes or Stitcher or whatever podcatcher you use, uh, you should be able to find it there soon, if not already. So if you could subscribe to that, that would be amazing. In this episode, we're going to be talking about luminosity mass. And to help me talk about that, we're going to have Greg Benz from Lumenzia. Greg Benz also has a really excellent YouTube channel. You should go follow his stuff there. A whole bunch of really good videos and pretty advanced uh, Photoshop tips. So a lot of good stuff over there. Anyways, I'm going to have him on helping me talk about luminosity mass. He is the creator of Lumenzia, a really powerful luminosity mask creation tool. I reviewed it in, in a couple videos back. I figured he would be the perfect person to help me talk about uh, luminosity masks. So sit back, grab some popcorn or some coffee, and enjoy this episode. Okay, so luminosity mass. I know when f people first jump into the concept of luminosity mass, first of all, it's kind of confusing as to what they actually are and what they actually do. And then they're kind of intimidating because the concept is, you know, different than what we've been doing. So Greg Benz, you are the perfect person to talk to about this. Yeah, uh, Greg is, like I've said, the creator of, uh, of Lumenzia. He knows a thing or two about luminosity mass. So where should we start with this conversation? You know, um, maybe just kind of starting for that, you know, audience out there that doesn't know uh, luminosity masking or even Photoshop, maybe with just some of the, the basics so yeah. people understand, like, what's the point? What, why would this matter in, uh, in your photography? Yeah, like when I'm teaching my workshops and doing the post-processing part of it, there's always those Lightroom users that, uh, you know, are like, well, you know, I, I, I'm pretty happy with Lightroom. I don't really see the benefit of working in Photoshop. And the, the whole point of Photoshop, to me at least, is working with layers and, and working locally with layers and working in that non-destructive workflow. It's so nice to be able to do an adjustment and have it on its own layer to where later on, if you decide, man, I really overdid that contrast adjustment, you can just go back and decrease the opacity of that particular layer or you can use layer masks to paint it into only the areas that you want it to affect. And that's really the, the, the whole point of using layers in Photoshop is being local and it never being destructive. Yeah, I, I think that that non-destructive concept, that ability to go back and make changes. I mean, that's that's the beauty of Lightroom, right? The, the core idea of Lightroom is that anything you do in Lightroom, you can undo. Yeah. And in Photoshop, you can work that way if you use the right approach or you can work destructively where you've permanently changed the image. And I think, you know, e even as someone who's been using Photoshop for almost two decades, I'm constantly making mistakes or mm -hmm. I change my mind or I miss something the first time. And for me, there's nothing more frustrating than spending a lot of time on an image and I get it really great. And then I come back later and I think, oh my gosh, I miss this thing. There, there, there's a there's a retouching artifact, or there's a a dust spot that yeah. kind of screwed everything up, or you know. So that that ability to go back in time or or do things differently, I think that's so helpful. And it, it just I think it changes the way you think too. Because yeah. the other part about non destructive is everything you've done. It's like a, it's like a log of the changes you've made to the file. So if I work on an image for an hour or two. And then I want to think about what did I learn? How do I use that technique again on the next image? When I have the layers and the, the layer masks, I can see what I've done. Whereas if I just did it to the image, but I did a hundred different things, then I, I may not know that there's a big learning potential yeah. there too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, the concept of using layer masks, let, I, to understand luminosity mass, you have to understand layer mass. So you know, the, the saying is white reveals and black conceals. And that, that's pretty much exactly how it works <laughs> it, it, with your layer mask. Anywhere that uh, you paint white or it is white, it's going to reveal that particular layer or adjustment. And anywhere that's where it's black, you're going to hide that adjustment. And the same is true for all those gradients in between all those grays. It's going to kind of show that adjustment. So if you think about luminosity mass, luminosity mass are nothing more than a black and white version of your photo. Like a lights one is pretty much a black and white version of your photo. 
And if you think about that whole white reveals black and seals concept, that means that that layer, whether it's a, an adjustment or pixels, is going to show more in the highlights than it is in the shadows if it's a black and white version of your photo. And that is pretty much the entire concept of luminosity mass. Yeah, you know, and, and if, if I could take maybe like a slightly different crack on it, everyone has a, sure. a different way of thinking about these things. I, I tend to think about there being kind of four components to the whole idea in Photoshop. You've got layers, right? Which is like, as opposed to just the single image out of your camera, you can stack different copies of an image or adjustments on top of each other. Now, if they occupy the whole image, then every time you put it one on top of it, it's just like sticking another photograph on top of another photograph. Yeah. But if you think of like scrapbooking, if you cut out a photograph and you start stacking things, that's layers. You can see these different elements, you know, maybe you add a tree, maybe you add a person. Those are layers. But then there are selections, masks, and channels, and each has a different purpose. So masking is what you just talked about, and that's the ability to take an image and cut out a piece of that image. And you can cut it out really hard with the scissors or in Photoshop. You can do it in a way where it's kind of soft, but the idea of a mask is it's telling Photoshop, which of these pixels should I reveal on this layer and kind of stack down? Yeah. Then you've got selections. So masks alter the pixels you have in the layer, Selections basically change the way your tool affects layers. So with a selection, it's like putting a, a stencil on your tool. So you can only paint in this area. You can only adjust this. So it's, it's, it's like real time guiding the tool. It's not doing anything to the image. It's changing the way your tool affects the image. And then there's channels, which for the most part, I think of being a way to save selections. So you can kind of like put them to the side and grab them when you need them again. I yeah. mean, it does some other things, but that's kind of the loose idea. Yeah. And they, and I know like for the, the Lightroom user, we just broke your brain <laughs> and <laughs> it's a lot to take in in the beginning, but once you get it, you get it. And there's so many different ways of using this and it's really unlimited. It's just kind of a different way of working. Um, you know, when I first got into luminosity mass, the thing that I was most interested in was a, an effective way of exposure blending. Exposure blending can uh, lead to really natural looking results, but it can also lead to like some hardcore halos unless you have some kind of way to use like a stencil. So you're not, you know, uh, darkening your horizon as you bring in that darker sky or, you know, creating that bright halo like we just ran it through photomatics. <laughs> uh, adding that bright halo to our horizon because, you know, our brighter exposure is coming into our sky. So luminosity masks are amazing for making a selection of, you know, luminosity. So you have, let's, okay, so let's pause. Envision a shot where you have a hard mountain and a bright and a, a dark mountain, a bright sky above it. If you use a luminosity mask, you can separate that sky from that dark mountain and you can use that selection to help you with your exposure blending. And I mean, there's lots of different ways, but, uh, Luminosity masks, the way that I use them the most often are just like you said, like a stencil. It kind of makes your painting idiot proof. So, so you can, <laughs> so you're only painting where you want to paint. Yeah, exactly. And to your example there, it's kind of like you look at that mountain and, you know, if you shot it with your camera, you'd end up with that classic scenario where either you can get a white sky or you can get a black mountain, but your camera can't really do both. Right. And so you, you're taking one shot that's a little brighter. So the mountain looks really nice and you cut out the mountain, you know, with, with kind of your luminosity mass. And then you take another shot where the sky looks really good and the black, you know, the mountains, you can ignore that because you're kind of cut out the sky. And now you're going to stick gonna, those two pieces together. Yeah, we're going to scrapbook them together. This is going to be the most <laughs> beautiful scrapbooked scene you ever seen in your life. <laughs> but it's true. But, but yeah. But, but that is the beauty of it. I, I think a lot of folks are probably familiar with the idea of HDR, maybe heard of high dynamic range yeah. where you take those different exposures and then you combine them. And the, the beauty of HDR is that the computer automates that process of bringing everything together and it only gives you a handful of sliders. And it's, it's certainly complex at a, at a level, but there's only so many things you can play with. Yeah. The downside is you're leaving all the creative decisions to the computer and it will never bring out the detail the way you really want it. And when mm -hmm. you take full control in Photoshop, now you're in the driver's seat. You can say, I want to grab these exact parts and I want to have this kind of fade. And it just, it gives you that creative element where the results, as you said, are just far more natural. Yeah, there's kind of like the progression as far as 
like when you're when you're sur- first getting into landscape photography and you're kind of going through the natural progression of different workflows like the in the beginning you don't really even notice that your sky is blown out or you don't notice that your mountain is silhouetted and you can't see like you, you don't really care so much and then you start to care and then you start using some kind of some form of HDR feature used to be photomatics, but I think it's far more popular to just do it inside of Lightroom. Now Lightroom ha- also has the bracketing, um, the bracketing feature where you can, you know, put three shots together and then come away with full dynamic range, which is great. It's a very natural way of doing it. The downside is that afterwards you still end up with that middle shot. And you need to use those sliders to bring out your shadows, bring down your highlights. When you do that, you're killing all of the natural contrast in your sky or in your foreground, and you're going to flatten your image. Um, And so the next step is to start trying to exposure blend and bring in that entire sky with that entire foreground and maintain those natural contrasts that are happening in both. Um, And that's, that's why we, that's why I use luminosity mass. Um, Like when I'm exposure blending, the like the method that I use to do that is I will start off with just manually painting in my sky. Like I will put my darker sky on top of my brighter foreground. And I'll manually actually paint that in using layer mask. And then you end up with all those areas where you have those dark halos around your mountain, around the tree that pokes over the horizon. And then I go back and I use luminosity mask to make a selection of those areas I screwed up. I'll grab like a darks mask and then I can go back and erase those areas that I messed up. And that's generally the way that I exposure blend. Yeah. And I do the same thing. Actually, I think that's one of the areas that when, you know, I mean, luminosity masks are definitely one of the more advanced topics and exposure blending is probably the, the apex, right? It's the, it's the hardest part of luminosity masking. And I think where people get a little bit frustrated is they jump right into that deep end and they'll maybe grab a luminosity mask and they try and just, stick it on the exposure but what you're trying to do is not necessarily to just use the luminosity mask across the entire sky what you want is to use it in the transition zone so you use pure sky in one area pure mountain in the other and then in between you need to create this transition zone exactly. and that's really what the luminosity mask is for yeah uh, and like you said when i first started i was trying to just like grab the perfect luminosity mask and put it on that darker frame and have it just magically work and it doesn't work that way you have to kind of use it as a selection use it as a stencil and then manually go in and and use your your bob ross part of you and paint <laughs> paint that darker sky in um, but like we said, there's so many different ways to use luminosity mass. Uh, exposure blending is just one of them. Um, another way that I absolutely love using them is by adding contrast. Um, one of the coolest things about using luminosity mass is that you're only affecting the tones that you want to affect. So let's envision that same, uh, beautiful scene. It's a very beautiful scene. Uh, it's always a beautiful scene uh, with a you, you got your sky, your mountain tree poking over the horizon. Well, if I just grab any old contrast adjustment and start cranking on those sliders, it's going to quickly blow out my highlights and block up my shadows and which completely defeats the purpose of all that exposure blending we just did. So now you can grab a luminosity mask that's going to limit that contrast adjustment just to the tones that you want to affect. That way you're not going to block up your shadows and blow out your highlights. Uh, another really useful uh, case for luminosity mass. Oh, absolutely. You know, there, there's so many ways to use it just on a single image. You don't need to be blending anything. Uh, I, I tend to think of it as almost being like kind of a crude language for me to speak to Photoshop. Because <laughs> when I look at the image, you know, I see a sky and a tree and a, and a river and all these elements and the magic wand kind of lets you do that in Photoshop, but in a, in a pretty crude way, whereas luminosity masks give you a much more elegant way yeah. to, to, you know, basically direct Photoshop to adjust, you know, that mountain or that river or that tree poking above the skyline. Right. And I think a lot of people that are familiar with like the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool might be thinking to yourself, well, why not just like make a selection of your sky and do it? Well, the, the, what makes luminosity masks so cool is all of those gradients in between because we're not just dealing with black and white where we have 100% selected, 100% not selected, which we would get from that quick selection tool or the magic wand tool. We're dealing with black, white, and all of those gradients in between. 
So that way it's affecting, you know, your highlights a little bit, but not nearly as much as your midtones. If that, if we have a midtones uh, selection and that that creates a much more natural result so that way we're not pushing tones up against other tones and then making them the same. We're affecting a large range just at varying intervals. This is really difficult to talk about. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's such a visual thing, but, but hopefully that makes some form of sense. Well, I, I, you know, I think most people kind of get that idea that if you, you know, took a paintbrush and you just went like right up with a hard brush and started making changes, painting on your image, right? You, you, you see brush strokes. Yeah. And it's kind of the same thing with a luminosity mask that you're going to see those telltale signs. It's not a brush stroke, but it's the same idea where you can see the edge of what was adjusted or what wasn't adjusted. And having those shades of gray kind of lets you stealthily go in and make changes so that when you Photoshop things, it doesn't necessarily look Photoshopped. It looks more right. real. Right. And um, another way, like I'm just giving away all my secrets today. Another way that I love using luminosity mass is when I'm dodging and burning. So if you're, you envision using this black and white version of your photo like a stencil, so you're painting through it, I can use that like a stencil so I can uh, hone in on the highlights of the darkest parts of my shot. So let's go back to our beautiful mountain scene. Uh, we got happy little trees down here in the bottom part of our, our shot that are kind of dark. They're kind of getting lost into the shot because we have that bright sky and they're down in the shadow area. But there are those highlights on the edge of our pine needles. So what you can do is you can create a luminosity mask to really hone in on those highlights on those pine needles. And then you can paint through that with dodging and burning and bring out the, the backlit needles and you can really bring out the details in your dark foreground that I have found is absolute magic for, uh, for bringing some three dimensionality into a shot. Oh, I, I think that's I absolutely agree. That's totally the pinnacle of it. Cause you, you think about a photograph, the, the biggest challenge with photography is you're taking a three dimensional world and you're smashing it into yep. two dimensions of a photograph. And so all that information gets lost. And in the image, if you can do things that create a sense of depth, then you really create a piece of art. And dodging and burning is one of the best ways to do that because you're taking the light that's already in the image, the truth that's in the image, but hard to see. And you're making it much easier to feel that depth in the image so that you know, you're kind of, you know, the, you know, as a painter would kind of shade an apple or you, you know, do things to kind of create that depth you're doing the same thing so the mountain on the sunny side it's getting a little bit brighter and the shadows are getting a little bit darker and now you can see the, the shape of that mountain or tree or whatever that thing is or you know to your point with needles you know if you're shooting say choya cactus in the desert yeah and to really see those sharp needles you can you get a sense of just how intimidating that thing is <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah so when we were down in phoenix i was so excited when i fr first went out and i saw these cactus which this is the first time in my life I'd ever seen them, but I just saw how backlit they were. I was like, oh man, that is dodge and burn heaven right there because you have this dark background and this kind of backlit bright uh, uh, needle on these cactus. And I was like, hey, you, and that's kind of how like knowing the tools that you have available to you in post-processing, that's how it can kind of change how you shoot. Because when I saw that, I was like, I know I can dodge and burn that. I can dodge those needles out and make them kind of backlit and glowy. And sure enough, I was able to do that, but it, it really uh, changed the way I composed the shot, knowing that I could do that. Oh, yeah, that, that opens up so many degrees of freedom. You know, when you look on the back of your camera, first of all, a properly exposed image usually looks terrible. But then there's so many other things you can do. I and mean, to your point earlier, um, you know, the exposure blending is just one of the things you can do, yeah. you know, with some images, um, I'll go in and use focal length blending, for example. So maybe I've got this like scene that looks really beautiful in the foreground with a wide angle, but then the, the mountain or whatever is the most interesting thing in the distance becomes tiny with a wide angle. So then I'll zoom in, take a second shot. So I take kind of the bigger mountain with a wider foreground, you know, and, and you could look at that and say, oh, it's, it's manipulation, it's cheating. And I, I'd have no argument with that um, because it's not true to the camera rendering forensic detail. But to me, it's all about capturing the feeling of a place. And when I go to a place and I see this beautiful foreground, that gives me a sense of where I am. And when I see this majestic big mountain, that, you know, is what really creates that sense of awe. And I yeah. need all of that. And the camera can't 
do that if it's rendering it the scene literally. Yeah, and when I, so focal length blending, that's another one of my favorite things, actually. But I, I've always argued that it, it makes it feel more real to me because, like you said, when, you, when you're at a scene, you look up and you see a big majestic mountain and you look down and you see your foreground. When you take a photo with a wide angle lens, you look down and you see your foreground, you look up and you see this tiny, cute little mountain. And that's not how you experience it in real life. And by doing that focal length blending, I feel like it's more true to how you experience a place rather than the way that a 16 millimeter lens experiences a place. Because that's, you know, if you, if you really want to get into it, like any photo that's not taken at 35 to 50 millimeters is just unrealistic. You know, how many of us get to see with 600 millimeters and compress a scene? That's that's very unrealistic. Same with like, you know, an 11 millimeter lens where everything's all wide and you, you get to see all that. That's not how our eyes see, but it is how we experience a place because we have the benefit of looking around. So absolutely. So what? Well, yeah, go for, go for it. Yeah. Well, and as you say, you know, thinking that a camera renders truth is kind of like saying that human vision stops at your retina. Yeah, but your yeah. your brain is the most important part of that. I mean, you think about why do we have white balance settings on a camera? Because if we're trying to be literal, then you should take it without ever adjusting that white balance. But the human brain offsets for the color of the light source or all these other little things that your brain does. You, you talked about moving around in three dimensions, but you can think about when you um, see a video of a place, yeah. how you really feel the depth of it. Whereas a photograph, you don't have the two eyes. You aren't moving around things you aren't seeing changes over time. Like uh, when I shoot seascapes, a lot of times I'll mount on a tripod and I'll capture multiple waves because, you know, those waves didn't all happen the exact same microsecond, but I experience all of them in the, you know, 10 or 30 minutes I spent watching the sunset and I can pull them together in a photograph. So, you know, I, I wouldn't argue with anyone who says it's not true. I mean, I am manipulating the file, but I wouldn't say that a camera is true either. I guess it's right. a question of, you know, how you use the tool. And I think if you use luminosity mass a certain way, you can actually add truth to a photograph. And if you use them many other ways, you can, you know, make something that's complete fantasy land. It's, it's really <laughs> yeah. up to you. Yeah, exactly. And then you have to find that happy medium in there. Like, are you going to be in complete Bob Ross land or are you going to be in like, you know, photo documentarian land? And there's that whole gradient in there where we can all happily live and we can all get along. It's okay. You know, it is art. Um, <laughs> But yeah, everybody kind of has to find where they're going to, where they're going to end up in that huge gradient. And me personally, I do like, I like me a happy tree. Um, so, so I let, I, I, <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of try to, trying to bring this back home. I feel like luminosity masks are just another tool in the toolbox, but they, uh, in my opinion, are one of the most powerful tools to have in that toolbox. Um, just because it gives you the control to manipulate the photo only in the tones you want to manipulate, which is kind of the whole point of Photoshop, in my opinion. So uh, knowing how to add contrast, add saturation, uh, use a luminosity mask as a stencil so you're only affecting the tones that you want to affect totally ups your post-processing game, in my opinion. Oh, no question. It's it just... It's, it's definitely a little intimidating when you first get into it. Um, and once you get a certain way up the learning curve, it just opens up so many possibilities. And honestly, you know, if you, if you jump into it, you know, I'd tell people, you know, start off with things like the contrast adjustments you mentioned, you know, yeah. just start with like the little things, get those simple little wins. There's some very basic things you can do that are not that hard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult if you try and jump in and you're looking at like, the best experts you can five on 500 PX and trying to oh, emulate yeah. their work or mm -hmm. something like that. That's, you know, you're not going to get there in one step, but you, know, you just kind of keep making um, improvements along the way. And it just, it opens up so many doors. I mean, I, it's to me, it's the best part of Photoshop. It just, it really opens up the potential to express yourself creatively in, in ways that just, I, I don't know any substitute. Cool. So for those people that are interested in creating luminosity mass, um, Greg has Lumenzia, which is a plugin that I really love. Um, I've used others before I've used yours. I started with like the Raya Pros and the TK Actions. Um, but now I'm using Lumenzia and let, let's toot his horn a little bit. I love it because it's, it's small and it's simple and it only has the stuff that I really use in it. A lot of the other panels have a whole bunch of stuff and, 
And because of that, they get a little bit cluttered in my opinion, but Lumenzia, Greg, I appreciate how uh, just simple it is. It's very easy to look at. You can find what you're looking for very quickly. Doesn't take up a whole lot of space. I like it. And <laughs> so, <laughs> the, so good job with that. Let's Golf see. clap. Good job. <laughs> um, where can people find Lumenzia and pick it up if they want to use it? Absolutely. Well, and, and I should mention also, I've got a, a free panel. So for anyone who's, you know, trying to watch a budget or they just want to dabble with it, you can go on my website on uh, gregbensphotography.com and get a, a free panel that will let you create the basic channels and, and opens up, you know, pretty much most of the doors with luminosity masking. Lumenzia will, will give you some additional things, but largely Lumenzia is about making the process just simpler and easier. It's more visual and um, giving you a workflow. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and I just completely lost your original question before I said that. <laughs> no, that, well, that, that was pretty much yeah. answered. Oh, and where can people go to find it? Like, what's the website? Oh, yes. Uh, so if you go to gregbensphotography.com slash Lumenzia, you'll see the link there. But if you just go to my website, everything's kind of linked from the top menu bar. Sweet. And he's got lots of free tutorials on YouTube. A um, lot, of, lot of really good free content. So make sure you check that out. Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. And uh, luminosity masks are intimidating, but you can do it. I have faith in you. So awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.